Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Golden, and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so at the end of the last one, I said that this one would be entitled Spooky. I wasn't very sure what I meant by that, I was also not feeling brilliantly well. I'm still not feeling brilliantly well. Um, there's been a bit of a nasty cold going on at work, which seems to be lingering with everybody that's that's had it. Um, and unfortunately, it's been lingering a little bit with me. Um, so on top of everything else that I usually have to deal with, you know, cold's not, <laughs> I'm not fantastically great. Um, but cold's not fantastically great for anybody who gets them, so I'm not going to going to complain loads. I um, just want to let you guys know that I'm still not 100%. Um, so if I end up being a little less focused, um, that's kind of why. However, I do have a better idea, but I kind of know why I chose the, the topic of spooky. Obviously, it's October and um, it's, it's Halloween soon. Obviously, I'm not releasing one on Halloween itself. Where am I? One second, let me look at the the month comes out. So I thought of a couple of ideas for how I sort of um, go about doing this one. Um, and actually, now thinking about the fact that next time is going to be day after Halloween, and I know what I've kind of entitled that one, I think the way that I'm I'm going to go about doing this is talking kind of about my um, growing up, my relationship with, with Halloween and, and stuff like that. So maybe a bit of an odd kind of vlog, but when haven't there been odd ones recently? Um, so, um, okay, so I can't remember if this is a detail that I said about myself at all. Um, but between the ages of five and 10, 11, I don't exactly remember when I stopped. Um, I used to do baton twirling. Um, actually, it was probably slightly long, younger than, than five. Five, five. Five and 10, I know I definitely was a baton twirler. I can't remember exactly how young I was when I started, and I can't remember exactly how, how old I was when I was convinced to. Um, to stop and I, I was convinced to stop. I mean, uh, I, mean I understand now a lot of my mum's motivation for doing that um, and nothing to do with you know wanting me not to do the thing that I enjoyed and everything to do with the fact that the particular troop we were with at the time was trying to push people in directions that she you know she thought I was okay um, but wasn't necessarily as good as I, I you know, could be and wanted me to sort of maybe just do like local competitions, but you know, there wasn't really a trip around um, that was suitable for me to do that with at the time. So, you know, her, her reasoning was, um, as I remember, uh, I was going to be starting secondary school soon and I, you know, that that's a lot of work and that's a lot of stuff to focus on and, you know, maybe take a step back so that I can sort of concentrate on, on doing that. Um, that, that was the reasoning she gave me. Um, I would have loved to have kept that twirling for a lot longer and now that I kind of know that, you know, a lot of the reasons were sort of, yeah, I, I understand her motives and it's fine, but <laughs> anyway, this isn't about that. Um, so back when I used to do uh, baton twirling and during the, the times that I, you know, actually qualified to um, go to the nationals, uh, the nationals were quite often held um, around uh, Halloween. Um, so, whereas my brothers got to do a little bit of, I say they get to, got to. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they did because they stayed at home with my grandparents. <laughs> whilst whilst um, my mum and I. Um, and, and my bat flying troop were off in a caravan for a week for, for the nationals. Um, anyway, as I said, it usually fell over Halloween, or Halloween was sort of like at some point sort of during it. Um, so I actually, when I was when I was little, went to a number of, well, I say little, yeah, no, I, I would say that I was little, um, went to a number of Halloween parties. Um, 
and I, you know, obviously back then, because, you know, I'm, I'm old enough for trick-or-treating not to really been such a big deal in this country when I was little. Um, so I know my brothers definitely weren't trick-or-treating um, without me. I think, I think they did one year when it sort of started becoming more of a thing over here and when my older brother was sort of old enough um, to be able to take my younger brother out with him. Um, so I think they did it the once without me. Um, but even like by that point, my older brother was sort of, I think he, he did the following year with us and then he was sort of too old to, to really be interested in that kind of thing. As I said, it wasn't so much of a thing over here back then as it sort of you know, became um, as I moved through my teens a little bit more and admittedly me and my friends because it was a bit more of a novelty did do it a little bit older than perhaps um, a lot of kids would now um, but again it also if like stems from the, the sort of it wasn't really sort of our culture back then it was sort of a very Americanized thing that was sort of starting to become a bit more popular over here, um, whereas the Halloween parties um, obviously were a bit more of a thing. I think um, I think a lot of schools sort of did a disco or something around that sort of time. Um, and obviously that was sort of reflected in you know the, the campsites that we that we went to uh, when for, for where we were staying uh, uh, <laughs> over the nationals. Um, would would throw a big party and it wouldn't just be like you know people from my own troop it would be like all the other troops that were sort of staying there and anybody else who happened to be in that uh, happened to be in the holiday camp um so yeah I, re I remember dressing up on on halloween quite a lot um sort of when i was little and then you know after i stopped doing the and curling um and it then became a case of um going out and and, and trick-or-treating um definitely with my brother's once and I, I apologize if you can hear that dog outside um don't know where that's come from well I do know where that's come from there's like a dog park <laughs> there's a park like two parks right opposite where I I am like really close together where everybody just walks their dogs and like people will just come and park outside just to walk their dogs <laughs> in one of those two parks um and they're usually not quite that noisy so I do apologise. Um, I don't know how well you can you can sort of hear it, but it's a little little yappy little thing. Um, anyway, so yeah, my initial sort of thing with with Halloween is yeah, it's something something you do, something you dress up. Um, it's quite a bit of fun uh, with the with the other girls that in my tro troop and stuff like that. Um, and then, as I said, we I stopped doing glass and twirling for for reasons. Um, and I did at least one trick or treating with both of my brothers. I, I'm fairly sure it was only the one. Um, I mean, there's only like a two year difference between me and my older brother. Um, but either like that following year, I was kind of old enough to take my younger brother by myself, and my older brother just went and did stuff with his own friends. Or I don't know. I I get the feeling it was only the once that he did go with us. Um, Maybe the twice, but I, I get the feeling it was only the once, and then after that he either went with his own friends or, or something like that. Um, but I, as I said, I do know um, I definitely did it uh, up until, until my, well, I'd say I was 14, 15 the last time that I did it. Um, and part of that was there was a friend I went to school with who had never done it. And as I said, it wasn't really so much of a thing um, when we were younger. It was sort of just becoming more acceptable that that's what kids over here would do on Halloween and Halloween is sort of it's, it's really interesting it's this really interesting sort of holiday and it's one of these those things obviously again I'm gonna have to reference another Asian books um but it's really interesting because obviously those those books are kind of set for the most part before I was born um, and I kind of know, sort of growing up, that this country's relationship with Halloween has changed. It, it's changed quite rapidly, and we've adopted a lot of American traditions really quickly. Um, or at least that, that's, you know, <laughs> over my lifetime. So it feels really quickly. And I mean, I guess it's 
not necessarily that quickly, but it feels like we've become much more commercially commercially um, aligned with how Americans sort of do um, Halloween. Whereas I can remember from when I was quite little and from the fact that, you know, a lot of my friends didn't actually trick or treat um, when they were sort of sort of younger and it wasn't something that they necessarily did till they were teenagers. And I know that it certainly wasn't as big a deal um, for people to do something for Halloween as it kind of is now, sort of doing the sort of, you know, racing stuff and kind of, you know, not really doing anything around the Halloween um, to sort of draw sort of a big kind of attention to it as as it kind of would be now. I mean, obviously it was always a thing. Obviously stuff did kind of happen for Halloween. Um, I, f- I found the same with with doing Valentine's Day stuff um, in that it's become a bigger deal. Like over the, over my lifetime, I feel like these things have become more and more commercial. So kind of going back and writing the, the stuff um, around the race and around, around those sort of times and, and not making sort of this overly big deal about certain things because they weren't quite as commercial back then it's it's kind of fascinating um as i said i know a lot of that is the american influence um i know a lot of what you know this country does now in terms of celebrating halloween and making sort of a bit of a bigger deal out of halloween like having like proper decorated like the nobody decorated for halloween like the first time the first time i went trick or treating Nobody decorated for Halloween. <laughs> Nobody did anything special. A lot of places didn't even have like anything ready and prepared um, for people to be to be trick or treating. That's how not a thing it really was back then. And you know, over the subsequent you know, four or five, six maybe ish years that I did um, do the whole trick or treating thing, sort of growing up. Yeah, it, it changed. It went from there weren't very many houses that did it um, and, you, you know, you might end up with a lot of fruit because people weren't prepared for it um, to, you know, substantially there were more treats. It was more better thought out. Um, it was, you know, you started getting the occasional decoration um, going up to certain houses. You, you also got like the sort of you know, impression of where were good places to go and where were bad places to go because of, you know, how people sort of decided to do things. Um, I mean, um, yeah, it was definitely over a very short period of time, um, people kind of went from this sort of not really being a thing that happened to to being kind of a big deal. And I maybe some of that is part of the country that I live in. Um, I'm sure... Other people um, will sort of like be able to tell me, oh no no no, it was always sort of like a really big thing in like this place or in this place or in that place. But you know, living down here in the country, <laughs> we are always late to the party. Um, at the same time, like a lot of people might be like, oh, but I remember like lots of stuff, you know, like that happening from from my childhood and it being kind of a big deal when I was younger. Not realizing that I'm a few years older than they are. <laughs> Um, because I know people, you know, do peg me as being a little bit younger than I actually am, um, which I'm not going to complain about, but, you know, I feel, I very much feel like over the course of the first 15 years or so of my life, Halloween kind of went from this sort of thing that, you know, people might throw a bit of a party for, but didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to, to being very much more how I think the, the Americans sort of do it um, and not necessarily going all out like I've seen some videos over the last few years of like you know like light displays and, and various like really decked out kind of things that can happen and that certainly was definitely not a thing <laughs> when I was growing up um you know and the, the, the idea that people do make this sort of this big kind of a deal about it definitely wasn't I don't remember it being like that when I was when I was younger but I do kind of remember this this sort of period of time where it kind of went from as I said not very many people in my in my area in my in my neighborhoods really being prepared for Halloween not having any decorations out 
not having very many kids going around trick or treating either, and, and maybe some of that is to do with, you know, there might not have necessarily been a lot of kids of the right age in that area, but at the same time, no, there, there were. I, I was in an area where there were a substantial number of children living. Um, so it wasn't like a case of, oh, well, they're not prepared for it because that there weren't a whole lot of kids around at the time. Because I know that can have an effect, like, you know, certain areas for a while don't necessarily need to think about it. And then suddenly, like, a lot of kids will move into the area and then they do need to think about it, which which is how it is very much now. Um, but I, I think back then it was definitely more a case of it just wasn't something that happened like that before. It wasn't something that was really a thing. Um, and then suddenly it was. And... Um, it just, yeah, it, it was it was weird. It was a weird time to be sort of growing up, um, where you're kind of, you have a lot of things sort of being done very much in the way they've always been done, slowly kind of changing and, and adapting, and the the face of sort of how we how we do things and, and like even things like simple and as silly as trick or treating, kind of very much just become a thing and become a staple and then you kind of look and you see there's an entire generation that never realised it was any different. <laughs> I probably work with a lot of those. Um, I mean it's still, I would still argue it's still not as big a thing over here as it is stateside. I would definitely still argue that. I definitely still don't think people go all out. Certainly in an area like the one that I'm now living in, um, I mean, I don't know how it will change over the next few uh, days, because uh, I'm still pre-Halloween at the moment, and um, that's what midway through the month, yeah, so midway through the month, <laughs> um, when I'm recording this, so I don't know how things will sort of change and alter um, over the over the coming days or how things will actually sort of shape up in my neighborhood um for for halloween itself but uh, i've certainly lived in different areas um of the city where they have done a little bit more i've certainly gone through areas in the city where they have done a little bit more um so again i think it's very much you know even a, a part of the city that you're in um as to whether or not people will bother to do anything um <laughs> So, so yeah, like I said, it's still it's still not as big a thing over here as it is uh, necessarily um, stateside, and it's definitely still one of those things that I feel has like our relationship as you know, even if, if just as a city or as a part of the country or even as a country as a whole. I think you know it's really fascinating to kind of see how something has changed. And, and it has, and it's still sort of, you know, I kind of look back now and think about how things were when I was younger, when I was a little girl, all those decades ago. <laughs> I, now I'm making myself sound a lot older than I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is, it's definitely, it's definitely fascinating. It is something that has fascinated me for for a long time. Um, so it's not just sort of like a new kind of, oh yeah, it's just like this interesting little tip, but it is something that, you know, this time every year, um, I do sort of think about, you know, how things were and how things are now and how things have changed. And I'm somebody, change is always interesting. Change is always, you know, and I know I have said this to the wonderful Jade recently. Um, change is not on its own good or bad. Change is just potential. Change is just potential for something good to happen or potential for something bad to happen or potential for something uh, somewhere in between to happen. Change itself is not good or bad. It's just potential. And I think, you know, even small things are filled with potential and uh yeah the optimist is shining through again <laughs> all right okay i think i've sort of babbled my way around this topic um enough i think 
I hope some of what I've said makes sense. Um, like I said, if people kind of remember things differently, um, I, you know, that's either because I might be slightly older than you think I am. <laughs> I, I think I've mentioned before how old I am, um, but I, I don't know on which one of these, and I don't know if uh, the person you you are watching this have <laughs> seen that particular one. <laughs> be interesting to see how old people guess I am uh, in the comments. You know, want to try that <laughs> and don't actually know. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if anybody kind of remembers it the way that I do, um, and the fact that you know things have changed and that it changed sort of actually fairly rapidly, um, or if you know it was always as it is sort of now, um, or if you feel like it's still changed um, in like the last five, six years or whatever, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, either way, we, it'd be kind of interesting to see, you know, if anybody has any thoughts about this one. Um, <clears throat> all right, okay, so enough of me kind of babbling. Um, so the next one, I entitled it on the calendar as story time. Um, when I sort of did that, I wasn't entirely sure why, <laughs> but now that I realise it is going to be the day after um, Halloween that we do get that one, um, I think that it might be a little bit of a true spooky kind of story, potentially. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Let's let's see let's see where we can go with that. Um, actually, I've I've now got a few other ideas for for what I can do with story time next time um, to kind of keep in theme with the spookiness. Uh, which yeah okay all right <laughs> okay so I hope you guys have sort of found this one interesting. I hope you're intrigued to come back next time, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.